shock, horror and fear. These three emotions visited me repeatedly each time I witnessed Nadia draw in my sessions. I was in my first year clinical placement at my graduate school and was completely unprepared for such a complicated and intense case. The first thing that threw me off was Nadia's goth-like dressing, something I had not come across in person before. She was an artist and skillful at drawing. It was through her images that she communicated a history of a volatile relationship with her mother, rape, drugs and suicide ideation. Nadia's artwork blew me away. It was like nothing I had seen before, not even in illustrations of case studies and art therapy books. Her drawings were bold, dark and terrifying. I recall clearly how I had felt after the first session. I suffered from body aches and came down with a cold. I knew what had happened. I had been traumatized. Immediately after the first session, I had run to my site supervisor, who had also panicked after seeing Nadia's artwork. She had made me call a psychiatrist to refer Nadia so that we could get get her responsibility off our shoulders. However, I was to continue working with Nadia. As for me, I was not sure if I was capable or skillful to handle the case. Could I even trust myself not to panic in the sessions? I contacted my personal therapist who told me that I could take Nadia's case as a challenge and continue or drop the case in order to protect myself. My supervisor never asked me any questions, not how I was handling the case or myself. I was left to my own devices. The artwork that I am making in this video is my attempt at processing my experience with Nadia. Perhaps I should have done this years ago, but it's better late than never. I chose charcoal to begin with. Its blackness and rawness reminded me of Nadia and her artwork. Also the fact that if I handled it harshly, it could break. As I continued to draw, a rhythm took over and in this sensory and kinesthetic play I allowed myself to disconnect with my cognitive brain. I wanted to see what would surface. As I emerged from the sensory to the perceptual and emotive levels of art making, I felt the need for a material that would contain the movement of the charcoal. whiteness of the clay mingled with the black of the charcoal evolved into a female figure bent and twisted with pain. The toothpicks that I pushed into her body were a validation
I rolled some clay into a ball. I realized that the ball was me, small, curled up and afraid. The black paint was the horror that Nadia's story had unleashed on me and which had engulfed me. The circle I drew was to, to contain that horror. Maybe if I enclosed myself and Nadia in the circle, we could both be safe. According to Fish, the supervisor must keep in mind that the beginning therapist is motivated, anxious and focused on basic skills and knowledge. Early in the work, he or she may have limited awareness. Frequently, the supervisee does not realize how much he or she knows. That is how I would describe myself during the time that I worked with Nadia. I believe my supervisor did not fulfill her obligation towards me as her supervisee, as someone who should have guided me practically through my anxiety, my doubts, my conflict. Perhaps she could have prevented me from being traumatized or recognized that I had been and contained me. Eventually, I think, the decision I made to continue with Nadia instilled a sense of confidence in me because I'd faced up to my anxiety and had proven to myself that I was able to handle such a heavy case. But I don't think my lack of supervision was fair to Nadia. Maybe if I'd had good supervision, I would have handled Nadia differently. Perhaps I would have understood my counter-transference better and worked through it to help Nadia. Perhaps I would have referred her to a more experienced art therapist. Unfortunately, I will never know. But what I do know now is the value of having a good supervisor and the criticality of regular supervision. Last but not least, our images are our supervisors too and we must continue to trust the process of making them and learn from them.